Hello! Thanks, everybody! We are back. Creech, look at this crowd. Uh, we've got a beautiful crowd here today, and uh, a couple not-so-beautiful ones, including the ones on the stage. <laughs> and we have today a very special show. This is actually a fan request. A lot of people want to know our funny movie theater stories. Actual real experiences that you and I have had during our many, many years of going to the movie theater. So here we are. Funny movie theater stories. The Creech and Franz Show. And what's going to be unique about this show is not only uh, do we have the funny theater stories from you as an actual moviegoer, but there's some crazy shit behind the scenes that happens that uh, me as a worker, former manager, projectionist, have been able to witness. So we get to hear your war stories as well, basically. Exactly, yes. And uh, oh. I feel like... Franz, you should go ahead and, and kick it off so we can we can know what kind of stories we're going to have to top. I have a good story. So me and Bam were in Chicago one time. Uh, Bam Margera, uh, as you know, I've worked a lot with Bam Margera doing the Jackass films, the CKY series, MTV's Viva La Bam, you know, a lot of music videos for uh, him and the 69 Eyes, all this stuff. So we've worked very closely. And we were in Chicago and he saw that the movie The Transporter was playing. Have you seen this movie, The Transporter, Creech? Franz, you know, I actually have not seen this. I believe it's the one that has Jason Statham. Um, yeah, it, it, I, it doesn't matter who's in the movie. It doesn't matter. If, if you haven't seen it, don't bother. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so Bam sees the movie The Transporter playing, and Bam is really into my cinematography. You know, I was uh, always shooting motion picture film at the time, 35 millimeter and Super 16 and stuff. So he says, we got to see The Transporter. I've heard wonderful things about this movie. And we had some beers on us. We we just gotten out of a bar and gotten takeout. That's the best thing to do. <laughs> get loaded exactly. and go see a movie. Well, not only did, not only did he wanted to go get loaded and see a movie, he wanted to go get loaded while seeing the movie. So we dug into an alley. We're stuck in the we're sticking the beer bottles down our pants, and we go in there. We take our seats. The movie theater's about half full, and we're watching it. So we're cracking beers now. There's it's weird. A lot of times when you're on a, like a flight or in a public place or in a restaurant, there's always some Mr. I'm the good citizen and I do the right thing and I demand you must do the right thing even though you're not hurting anybody. You know what I mean? Like this yeah. this m m Mr. Five Star Citizen. is a, So he hears us cracking the beers and he goes, Yo, is that alcohol you're bringing in here? I'm like, dude, relax. <laughs> it's soda. So, so he goes, well, you're not supposed to bring soda in here. You know that, don't you? And Bam goes, what difference is it to you? Just enjoy the movie. We're poor, okay? We don't have enough money to buy the <laughs> sodas here at the, at the movie theater. We're bringing in our own. And and the guy's with his kid, so he has to be Mr. Mr. Morals for his kid to show his kid that he has the high moral authority over everyone around him. So anyway... So we start sipping on these beers, and uh, and about three beers into it, <laughs> Bam goes, "Man, I gotta take a piss." And so I go, "Well, well, wait for one of the boring parts." He goes, "Fuck that! I'm not waiting for anyone." So he whips out his dick and starts just pissing there <laughs> in the seat. Now the the piss is hitting the floor and <laughs> it's splashing up all over my pants and his pants and my boot and he's like half pissing on my boots but I think it's hilarious that he's doing it and the dude kind of the dude a couple rows in front of us kind of looks down you can tell he sees <laughs> the rush of piss and uh, <laughs> and so he looks back he goes what are you spilling what are you guys what are you guys what are you spilling a soda and, and in the meantime everyone around us is going shh quiet we're trying to watch the movie and uh and so i go i go that's not from us someone behind us must have spilled something just relax and watch the movie and then uh bam drops his beer bottle he like well he just he put it down gingerly on the floor and then he accidentally kicked it with his with his <laughs> shoe and it starts rolling down the aisle it hits the dude in the boot the dude picks it up and goes you're a busted get over here Security! And me and Bam were like, let's get the fuck out of here. This movie sucks anyway. Fuck you, assholes. So yeah, that's uh that's that's my big uh my big story with uh Bam Margera 
uh, watching the transporter in Chicago. What do you got for me, Creech? What, what do you got that you think you think you think you can top that, Creech? Is that what you think? Uh, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sure, Franz. To be honest, I mean that's a pretty good one to, <laughs> to kick everything off with. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with one that happened actually during my time as a manager at the theater. Well, this was a eight screen movie theater, um, and it is the it is the really the cheapest seat in town. I mean, even to today, it still is. But back then, in 2008, it was like two dollars during the day. Four dollars at night, and that was for first run movies. Um, <laughs> and it's not in the greatest part of town, so uh, you, you can mm. see why it's a little bit cheaper. Um, mm. But yeah, so I'm managing the theater, and one of my friends uh, was going through a dark spell, uh, to say the least. At the time, uh, he was doing a lot of drugs and and uh, making drugs, and unbeknownst to me... Wait, 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 and wait, you just breeze by a very important... And making drugs? Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> making drugs. Um, see, I didn't know this at, at the time. Uh, what kind of drugs What kind of drugs are we talking about? Are we talking about meth, LSD, what? No, it wasn't anything like that. It wasn't anything like hardcore, like Walter White, you know, cooking involved this well, what was, else can, well, what else can you make what is he growing this, weed? this though this was some kind of drug <laughs> that involved the over the top or over the counter uh corsetin and some other stuff that apparently you mix together and you ferment in a toilet like prison style apparently um which is just weird <laughs> but uh he he makes it and apparently it is it's, it's as strong as like lsd or acid and, and it makes you hallucinate, and um, okay. But we're gonna we're gonna get to that part. Um, okay, okay. So I didn't know he had made this and then actually used this before uh, coming to the theater. But he texts me out of the blue. I'm already working. And he's like, "Hey, uh, I really want to come up and see uh, Cloverfield. I've been waiting for that movie for a long time. Uh, do you think you can get me in today?" It was during the week, so the movie theater was a little bit slower than normal. So I was like, yeah, sure, just uh, here's the times. Come up when you want, and I'll get you in. So he comes up. He doesn't seem to be off. Um, he just seems really happy. So I just assumed that maybe he had a great day. Um, right, And, of you know, he, he goes into Cloverfield. Uh, he sits down, uh, starts watching the movie. As you know, it's found footage and... About a monster attacking New York, uh, probably about 30 minutes into the movie, which is roughly, probably, what, 10, 15 minutes after the the attacks start happening in the movie, uh, I get a customer coming and saying, there, there's a guy screaming bloody murder in the theater, um, and we're, you know, we were actually kind of scared. Can you remove him from the theater? <laughs> and at first, I'm like, oh, God, who is this? Like well, seriously, this is this is how my day is going to be here today. Uh, so <laughs> so I go in there, and the first thing I notice is that the actual voice sounds really familiar. That's screaming, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I, I hear, oh my fucking god, he's killing people, he's killing people, and I'm like, what is going on? I go I go over to where my friends at, and of course, it's him that is screaming. And apparently, in his uh, drug-addled mind at the time, he was watching the monster come out of the screen and eat the people in the theater. <laughs> like, he was seeing him scoop people up and rip them in half and everything. And he's like, there's blood everywhere! <laughs> and and uh, unfortunately, this this ends with, I have to kick my own friend out. Who I got in. But wait a minute, but wait a minute, what, but, 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 what I don't understand, okay, but at this point you have no idea that he's on a, a, a hallucinogenic drug. So what is the first thing going through your mind when you see your friend ranting and raving a, 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 to, to this uh, uh, to this degree? I mean, what what are you thinking? I wasn't really thinking anything other than I need to get him out of this theater now. Uh, <laughs> I was like, uh, this is not good. I didn't, I didn't even... Yeah. I didn't find out the other side of the story for like two weeks later, and then he was like, "Yeah, uh, I'm sorry about that." And I was like, "What are you talking about?" I was like, "Yeah, I was uh, making drugs and like, you know, took them." <laughs> I was like, "Oh, oh, <laughs> making... okay. Well, don't ever do that again. At least if you're going to come see a movie at my theater." 
Well, what else have you witnessed over there in your in your years of service uh, as a as a movie theater manager, projectionist, etc.? Uh, the life of a projectionist was pretty boring back in the day. Um, now I don't even know if they quite exist anymore because most of the digital projectors start and stop the movies themselves. But back then, you had to have a projectionist that literally, you, you put the movie, to, you threaded it up, and you started it. When it dropped, you rethreaded it and just kept. That, that's all you did all day. So right, yeah, a, a lot of the a, a, a lot of the younger listeners don't know that film was back then was actually made on a material called film, and it required a person to actually touch this material called film and put the reels on but moving them in themselves was was a pain in the ass back then because like nowadays with digital there's a hard drive that's encrypted you can take the hard drive out put it in a different projector and bam it's going to show on that theater screen but with uh film you had to clamp the movies have people to lift the film up and carry it over to to, to whatever theater you wanted to show it in and uh how much how much how much did they weigh they weighed anywhere from 30 to 40 pounds, usually. Did you ever drop one? Oh, yes, yes. That was <laughs> that, that, that was where one of the things were to get to. I, I, wound, I wound up did dropping it. Uh, I've dropped a couple of movies. And uh, one of the ones that was the worst was Avatar on opening night. Because um, that was probably about 50 or 60 pounds. Um, and it was just two of us because we couldn't get a third person because you can only use three clamps on the film, but it doesn't really hold it tight. So if you don't pick it up in the right places, the film will literally fall between your, your fingers. So what we had, we, we, we lifted it up and then a, literally a good third of the middle of the movie fell out while we were trying to move it. Oh. Just just fell all over the floor. I'm assuming that most people who are listening to this have actually seen a piece of film, but when it unrolls, it's like it has a life of its own. It just expands in all directions, and it it gets in coils, <clears throat> and it tangles, and it just gets all over the place, and then it gets dust all over it. It's crazy the way when when film starts to unravel. Watch out, and it and it is so delicate; it can get yeah. damaged so easily. What did you do? Uh, well, I said a bunch of curse words. Um, <laughs> that was that was my first my first reaction. Um, but yeah, then I was like, well, shit, this is opening day of Avatar, which went on to be the the highest grossing film in, in history. Uh, no thanks to you. No thanks to me, right? Uh, on opening <laughs> night, I, I dropped it. I dropped it probably about three, three or four o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and it took a good for roughly the the reels that dropped on the floor were probably maybe thirty to forty five minutes of actual film. Uh, however, it took a good six hours to unravel and then re attach it to the rest of the film oh my uh, god and we had to cancel all the rest of the showings for that night <laughs> so yeah we uh we, we didn't get no money on that one that's actually not the worst thing i've ever done though uh believe it or not to a what's film the worst what's the worst you ever fucked up <laughs> oh god this was american gangster with uh denzel washington Right. And uh, American Gangster was a long movie, and it was also the, the last one I was building up the night before. So I was exhausted, and I was tired. And I wasn't obviously paying attention. So <clears throat> I'm watching the movie the next day, and, you know, everything's working fine. And then one of the, the reels goes through, and all of a sudden the image is upside down. And you're like, what the hell is going on? I'm looking at it like, what the you hell is put going the on? Film in, you put the film in backwards. When I was putting it together, I put one reel upside down. Oh, um, my God. And this was a sold-out showing uh, with, with over <laughs> over 200 <laughs> seats. We had to refund <laughs> all of the ticket sales, and we had to refund <laughs> all of the concessions. So, so we, the concessions you had to give the candy back. They had to give the candy. We back? had to. We had no. We had to give the. They got to keep whatever they actually bought, but we had to give them the money they spent for it back. 
Oh my god, dude. And that's and that's how a movie theater makes its money. A lot of people think a movie theater makes its money on the tickets. They don't. They make it on the sale of candy. It's basically a big glorified candy store where you can watch a movie. Um that is crazy. How much trouble did you get into? I uh I didn't get into too much trouble surprisingly because uh frankly that that theater manager was getting ready to leave so he gave two shits. Um, but thank God for people who thank, are underpaid. Yes, thank thank <laughs> God for that because uh, I cost easily upward to probably close, you know two to three grand for that for that showing. <laughs> and and how do people prove that they got the candy? Like, did they just come to you with empty popcorn boxes they picked up off the floor and said they paid for it? Oh, there must you have been so they, many fights. It is very well. They could have. They could have done that. You know, I would have done that. I'd have oh. been like, "Yo, oh, that person dropped their stuff. Let me go ahead and get that." Hey, I bought this. Oh my god! Uh, actually, <laughs> uh, to to go about with with uh, kind of upsetting our boss, I'm gonna go to literally my like my second day on the job. This is when there I was starting to train for projectionist, so. He was showing me just how to how to f- begin threading through the rollers, uh, and he he was busy and he was like, "Okay, well, you can go go ahead and do this one. This movie's getting ready to start." And it was like, "Meet the Robinsons." So I'm threading it through. Um, and, and this is your first time. This is your solo run. This is the yes. first time your boss yeah. has trusted you to do it yourself. Yeah, he's not he's not watching. <laughs> he's not watch, you know watching me at all. Um, and I, I know both, where this is going. Yeah, and so I threaded up something wrong, and uh, it caused the platter to sp- to spin really, really fast, which in turn wraps the film really, really tight, and it it got really fucked up. And then I, I was I didn't know what to do. Uh, it was <laughs> my second day, so I was like, uh, I went I, over the walkie. I was like, Hey, hey man. Uh, I'm done. Can I can I go on break? Is it is it fine if I go on a break? And he's like, Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Go ahead, man. And so this movie's supposed to start. There's no way in hell it's gonna start when it's supposed to. I'm I'm down in the theater just because I I was like, let me hide. Um, but wait 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 a minute. Wait 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 wait. So you just you created a, he he trusted you on your solo run. <laughs> You created a big problem and fucked up the film, and then you just left and acted like there was no problem. <laughs> exactly, I didn't even tell you him that anything was wrong. <laughs> and and so like you're never getting hired for anything again. Wait till people hear. Wait till this story gets out. Right? You're never fucking get. <laughs> you little weasel son yeah, of a bitch. Yeah. And then so like I go downstairs, and then in that theater, I heard him scream CJ really loud. <laughs> And then uh, <laughs> somebody went over the the walk in there like, "Hey, uh, why isn't uh, why isn't Meet the Robinson starting?" And he's like, "Because CJ, that asshole, brain wrapped the film and didn't tell me, and then asked to go on break." <laughs> and so then it's and, oh, not only did you betray your boss, but now he knows you betrayed him. <laughs> oh my god, dude! Oh. Ha, ha. What did you say? How did you weasel out of it? I was like, God, I didn't know what to do, man. I freaked out. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's really all, all, he accept- all I did. He accepted that? Wait, he oh, no. accepted that as an excuse? <laughs> no, I was doing bitch work for the rest of the day. He was like, you're not touching any of these projectors. So he was, he was having me like clean the insides of the heads in between showing with a toothbrush. So I, I got to do like oh. a bunch of, of bitch work for the rest of the day. Uh, well-deserved bitch work, I guess you could say, but... Um, well, and either he, either you were such a nice guy that he, that he decided to keep you on, or it was such a low paying shit job that nobody else wanted it, and you were the best option. Yeah, probably, <laughs> probably the second one, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember when uh, Kill Bill Two came out, and uh, of course, I was a big fan of. Tarantino and how he had the nonlinear storylines, like in Pulp Fiction. It's told in a nonlinear fashion. You you don't watch the movie in order. So I think we're like five minutes early, but the movie's already started. And I was like, this is bullshit. They started the movie like five minutes early. All right, well, fuck it. So me and my girlfriend, we sit down, and it's the scene. What I didn't know is it's the end scene. In the newspaper, 
they had the listing wrong of the time it was going on. They had changed the, the time that the movie started. And they didn't oh, have geez. it written anywhere in the fucking movie theater. So I've been so excited to see Kill Bill 2 for like two years. And I think they're showing what seems to be the final showdown scene at the beginning of the movie. Because the movie is not in order because it's a Tarantino script. And yeah, I fucking watched the last scene of the movie before I got to see any of the fucking movie. I was fucking furious. And yeah. was I man enough to ask for my money back? No. I, I don't know why I didn't stick up for my rights as a consumer, man. If I don't know. I've got speaking of surprises. Now this this one actually didn't happen at my theater. Uh but we got word back. It was a sister theater of ours that wound up uh unfor- having this unfortunate incident happen to it. You know, as you know, sometimes theaters, especially when movies get older, sometimes they'll wind up doing uh, showings, alternate alternate showings. And for some reason, this theater decided that they were going to alternate uh, The Hills Have Eyes 2 with uh, The Last Mimsy, which was a, a kid's movie, which is a bad idea. You know, R-rated horror movie and G-rated kid's movie. Um but this person, the projectionist there, was not paying attention. I know where this is going. Yes. This guy <laughs> did not notice. And um, unfortunately for all of the kids and adults in the theater, Hills Have Eyes 2, the remake, does not start off, uh, I guess you could say, kind of, you know, how some movies kind of start off a little bland or whatever. They introduce yeah. characters. No. The beginning of this movie <laughs> is a graphic birth scene. Of, of of a mutant ripping a baby for between this lady's legs, and there's blood shooting everywhere, <laughs> and it's just one of the the you know the most shocking starts to a movie. I mean, granted that movie sucks. There's no but, build up, but, but there's, there's no, no build up. There's, there's no, no build warning. Up. There's <laughs> no, but that's the first thing that happens. And and uh, what happened was there was almost a riot of screaming and crying <laughs> children and parents running out of the theater after that scene uh, of, you know, running <laughs> straight to the box office to raise hell. Um, oh, my God. Oh, what, chil- did they, what were they saying? Oh, the parents were livid because, you know, it's graphic and it's very dark. Um, they were they were upset, and their kids the kids don't know what don't even know what they're witnessing, but they're crying because of, you know it's once again gra- very bloody, very graphic. It's a kind of scary looking mutant that's doing it, and <laughs> it's just just a, a bunch of bad. This person got fired. They didn't get no second chances like I've I've gotten. Whoa. Uh, they were they wow. were fired. So, uh, so- Basically, those kids, that whole movie theater of kids, is going to have nightmares for the next seven years. Oh yeah, no, this was two thousand and seven, so now they're they're probably deranged teenagers, <laughs> adults now. If you turn on the if you turn on the TV and see shit happening in their neighborhood, it's probably them that are doing it now because they were traumatized <laughs> by Hills Have Eyes two in two thousand and seven. God, can you imagine how many of those kids are growing up to be serial killers as we speak? Exactly. The, the the death toll could already be huge from this point on. I witnessed the movie theater riot one time, and I went to see a movie called The Faculty, which oh, I Oh, great love. movie. Yes. Yeah, great goddamn movie, right? So we're like partway through the movie, and all the fire alarms go off. I'm like, God damn it. I'm in South Philadelphia, and you get a lot of kids in these movie theaters that like to pull fire alarms. It happens all all the time and it happens a a lot less now that there's video cameras everywhere and it's also a felony uh so (laughs) but but back then before the 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 golden age of video cameras people were pulling fire alarms left and right and i remember coming out of the movie theater now when you talk about free speech and our first amendment rights someone always says Yes, you have the right to say anything you want, so long as it doesn't imp- uh, infringe upon the safety of other people. For example, you can't yell fire in a movie theater. So I go outside the, the, the door into the lobby, and there's this black dude on the balcony yelling, Fire! <laughs> fire! <laughs> fire! Now, people think there's a fire and people start pushing 
and shoving and and women are falling and babies are crying and people start fighting i'm like holy shit so no one's using the fire exit doors everyone's trying to go out to the main lobby so i go out to the main lobby there's this like gang of like now we don't have like the bloods or the crips here in philly but we got some gangs of some bad motherfuckers and they were there to see one movie or another and they were not happy and they're sitting there demanding their money back. Now, everyone's pulling around them to try and make it out the doors, pushing and shoving. They're yelling at the lady. She's begrudgingly taking out her cash box. Her manager starts screaming at her to get back here and help me control this, blah, blah, blah. So she just leaves. They reach into they're, they're all their hands just shoot into the little window where you can talk and so there's like three hands all grabbing in there like an octopus grabbing the money money's flying around in there i'm like i gotta get the fuck out of here before somebody pulls out a gun and starts shooting it felt very dangerous and it was very scary and i called the movie theater the next day and told them what happened they said yeah just come on and we'll give you your money back no questions asked well, at least there's a, a nice ending for that one, for sure. That's uh, what I call the First Amendment, uh, the First Amendment violation robbery. That's what I call that story. <laughs> well, I've got one that involves fire too. Probably one of my worst days as a manager, and this is mainly due to the head manager of the actual uh, theater at the time. We had a nickname for him, and uh, his nickname was Crab Apple. So if, if, for instance, if we uh, saw him coming in to the theater, everybody would go over the walkie, crab apple, so we could all mentally prepare to deal with the bullshit that he was getting ready to put us through. Oh, okay, um, so crab, crab apple was your, your code word for the asshole is coming to work here today. Yes, or the asshole is here. He was strict and to the budget. He always wanted to make sure he came in under budget because he got a bonus. So... This guy would skip. I hate people. Dude, I hated people like that at all my minimum wage jobs. God damn it, dude. Is it worth the stress for you to make 10 extra dollars at the end of the month and to put us all through a bunch of bullshit? God yeah, he would it. He would literally have... Uh, there would be times where I would be opening the theater and I would literally be the only employee. So I was literally, I was selling people the tickets. I'd go to concessions and sell them their food and then go upstairs and start the movie. I was literally doing everything. It was a nightmare. Um, oh, man. Uh, there was a movie that was supposed to be really big that thankfully wound up flopping. And it was called uh, The Last Airbender. It was an M. Night Shyamalan movie based on like that kid show Avatar. Um, not to be confused with the blue people. This was a bald kid with uh, that could control the elements. We were having a midnight showing there, and he didn't schedule many people for to prepare you're having, for wait, wait, it. You're having you're having a midnight showing of a kids movie. Yes. Yeah, this dude's a genius businessman. He's gonna bust everyone's balls to make an extra ten dollars for his profit margin, and he schedules a G-rated movie at midnight. Exactly. So about. I'd say probably about 10 o'clock. Uh, basically, shit hit the fan from 10 to 12. And so, first off, there is a car that catches fire in the parking lot. And um, <laughs> and nobody decides to notify any of the people. And a tow truck comes and just starts towing people's cars away. I get that he was, quote, uh, he said he was trying to make them safe. But it's like he didn't move them. He actually took them away. So, <laughs> it's a very big dick move to do. <laughs> Um, but they called the, the fire department and the fire department is also smashing people's windows to, to, to get the cars that were left, uh, to, to put them in neutral and push them away from the one that they're fighting oh my the fire God. with. So all of that shit's happening. So they do all that and then they, you know, they want to, they want to get all these cars away what? in case it blows up. They don't want a chain reaction of like, I guess, dark night proportions over right. here. Okay. Uh, and um, so they're they're smashing and moving, and you know all the people in the theaters are none the wiser. Some people's cars have been taken off. Some are now windowless. Um, <laughs> and uh, we had that headache to deal with. And then when people start lining up for this this midnight screening, some jackass decides out of all nights 
that that he is really happy for his this elemental bit i guess you could say uh moving kid and this is he just starts like blowing fire out in front of our box office like see i was livid wait 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 he's doing what He's, you know, like one of the the carnies or whatever that that would like, you know, spit fire or whatever, as, yeah. as like a trick. Yeah, he was out there doing that, For, and I was livid. I went out there and probably devoured his soul by just staring at him, because that guy took one look at me and completely bolted. Because, Wait, but I, don't you need a license to do that? You need like a license and like a permit to do that and permission. Yeah, yeah, I would I would assume so too, but we didn't we didn't hire anybody for this and this guy, this jackass decides he wants to bend some elements himself and start spitting fire. <laughs> and what the hell kind of neighborhood is this? This is not the greatest neighborhood. It's a nice place to go to get a good old fashioned, you know, cheap movie, maybe witness a drive by. Um there's been people that were shot and that ran into our theater afterwards, you know, dragging blood into oh, yeah. the store. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> I'm, I'm dead serious. <laughs> oh my and meanwhile, god, that's terrible. And, and I, I come off as the dick for that because the guy that got shot, he got shot in like the leg. It wasn't nowhere. He didn't hit nothing. Uh, but so it's just bleeding a little bit. But this this guy comes bleeding in there. I'm like, get the hell off the bench, dude! You're bleeding all over the floor. <laughs> and, and like, I don't want your AIDS. Excuse yeah, me. I, I know you're dying, and I know you've been shot, but I don't want your AIDS when I have to go clean this up. Do you, can, can, can you move it along? Yeah, sir? it's like I'm gonna need you to go <laughs> die somewhere else if that's if that's the case. <laughs> but from what I hear. People like to do sexually perverted things in a movie theater, and having worked at one, you must have seen your fair share of uh, interesting activities when the lights are out. Creech, am I right? Am I right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're you're definitely uh, <laughs> right, Franz. Do you tell? I do tell. Seen quite a bit. The one that sticks out with me the most um, is is when I was yes. a projectionist. You have the people that that just sit in the theater watching the credits and so i wanted them out so it could be you know they could the ushers could go ahead and clean so uh, literally almost as soon as the movie ended and it just starts listing the cast members of the movie i'm turning the lights on and you know so so that so that (laughs) people will get up and and leave (laughs) but uh i did that and i can't remember what movie it is I, i only remember that it's a movie that had Nicolas Cage in it. I Usually I don't do this, but I glanced <laughs> down as I was turning on the lights. And I saw movement. And the next thing I know, I'm looking at a girl on top of a guy. Uh, and they're, they're, they're staring at me with like deer in the headlights. <laughs> and they look at me knowing that I know exactly what they're doing. And I'm feeling extremely awkward for turning on the lights and having to witness this. So I just turn the lights back <laughs> off and then slowly step away um, and just uh, never mention that again. So they have a vision in, in, ingrained in their memories of having sex and then seeing your exactly. face watching them. Um, <laughs> but, but, I, but who gets that turned on during a Nick Cage movie? I mean, what's there to get a boner about? I, 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 I don't know either. It. There was another movie. It was like a, the last showing, which is usually when people try to get their, their freak on because there's not many people in the theaters or whatever. They're being risky, and they're... I mean, I, I believe they were the only two people in the theater, but they were doing it in the middle of the movie, and I caught uh, them... Uh, you know, a lady's head kept going a little bit further down south than just to pick up anything, if you get my drift. So she's straight up, yeah. She's straight up blowing right, this right. dude, and so I'm like, you know, I'm not going to turn the lights on or anything because obviously it's in the middle of the movie. This woman is obviously not picking up raisinets from the aisle. Yes, I I make the stupid mistake to, to, <laughs> to bring some of the ushers up there, and I was like, yo, you should go look out that window and check out that. And so of course they look and and see it, and then their smart idea is they go back downstairs to the theater that they're in, open the door ever so slightly and just scream ew at the top of their lungs <laughs> yes so yes. mature at the top of the so, top of their lungs and then run out giggling 
So immediately, this the, the people were were pissed off, and they wanted to speak to the manager, and they were uh, very upset that they were bothered. <laughs> so, what, what the fuck are you gonna say to the manager? Excuse me, excuse me. We're sitting here trying to peacefully have sex in the movie theater, and uh, your employees are a bit <laughs> immature. Yeah. <laughs> How do you complain well, they, about they that? They complained about it, and they got free passes to see another movie. Uh, way. No way. Um, and it was just... <laughs> well, the only the only tale of sexual perversion I've ever even come close to was I'm taking a whiz in the, uh, in the bathroom at the movie theater, and standing next to me at the urinal is a gay black transvestite dude who looks down, looks in my eyes, and goes... That's right, honey. Bear it and share it. So long as it has pubic hair on it. That's what my mom always told me. And I'm just <laughs> staring at this dude. I'm like, your mom told you that? And, I, and he goes, that's right. As long as the person's old enough, you can do whatever you want. You know what I'm saying, honey? Mm. And I'm <laughs> completely freaked out. I'm like, no, I don't know what you're saying. I'm just trying to take a whiz here. And that was, uh, so yeah, that's about as far as uh, I got to first base in a movie theater. Weren't you telling me that one of your friends realized he was gay for the first time in the movie theater while you were working? What was the st- What's the deal with that? Well... There was this one guy, and you know, I mean, I'm not homophobic. I have, I have actually quite a few gay friends, and um, sure. The, the 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 thing was, one thing annoys me is if you, I mean, I get that it may be hard to come out, but when you're so flamboyantly like over that that point, like I don't see why you why you'd want to. You're right, it. right. One time, a friend of mine came out to us, and he was like, "I have news for you guys, I'm gay." And we were like, dude, we've known. He's like, how did you know? You're gay, and we love you. Come here. Give me a hug. (laughs) You know, it was like one of those moments. He's all crying, and he was freaked out that we all knew he was gay, probably before he knew he was gay. Yeah, and this this, (laughs) this guy would vehemently deny that, that he was, in fact, gay. Would swear up and down that he had a girlfriend... And that they would spend hours upon hours making out. Oh, that not that always sad when one of your gay friends is in denial and they sit there for so long, like, uh, every girl that walks by, they're like, oh, man, look at her butt. Right, guys? Uh, yeah, dude. Okay. Oh, man. Oh, she's hot. Oh, I'd like to feel her boobs. It's like, it's like, just admit to yourself, you're gay, you'll be happy, yeah, I swear yeah. and, to and, God. And this guy, would he would go to, to college and then come back for the summers, and he'd work box office. When he came back, still maintained his straightness. When he came back, still maintained his straightness. Um, however, <laughs> we had a, another manager there with me. Uh, his name was Ryan. The the gay dude, or well, the gay guy in this, denial, yes, dude. Yes. <laughs> the the jid, the gay in denial. He radios that he needs help in box office, uh, and that he needs access to the safe. Uh, Ryan and me are looking at each other, and we're both fairly lazy managers. But Ryan goes down there, and he's going to help out Mister Jid. He right. opens the door, and the jid is standing there with uh, a hard on. Uh, in his hands, uh, staring point blank at Ryan with the biggest smile on his face. Wait, th- so the gay dude in denial, the jid, is standing there with his wiener in his hands, yes. just like yes. that? Yes, and uh, Ryan said he he uh, he looked at he was looking at him very lustfully. Uh, it kind of like you'd see in those cartoons when. Uh, like a dog or somebody sees a piece of meat and then they start, like, you know, salivating profusely. Like the old Tex Avery cartoons where the wolf was like, woo! woo exactly. Woo, woo. He's you looking. Go. And, oh my uh, God. He said he looked at it, he, he looked down because he was opening the door and he looked up, so he got an eye full of cock. And then he looked at the fa- <laughs> it's better, yeah, it's he, better than a mouthful. It's better than a mouthful. <laughs> but and then he immediately <laughs> looked up to his face, and then you know, obviously he saw the reaction, and he just started screaming, "No, no, 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 no! Oh God, no!" And then he he <laughs> backed up and then slammed the door shut. Uh, Ryan Ryan did leaving. Well, well, wait leave- a minute. 
but but the gay dude but the gay dude who hadn't come out yet radioed to you first. Yes. Yes, no. He So he wanted so that boner that he was holding in his hand waiting for someone to come in was intended for you. 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 Well, I I narrowly dodged that bullet thankfully. Uh But wait, so at the end of the day, he was just waiting for the next dude to come in to see his <laughs> exactly. whack. Exactly. It didn't seem to matter who it was. He was just ready to, I think, officially come out. But then he kind of backtracked a little bit, I'm going to be honest. After Ryan almost fell out of the uh, the, the box office from backpedaling, um, he, you know, he uh, did put his, his thing back in his pants. It came out and was like, ha ha, ha ha, I got you. That was a good joke, right? Good guy joke, right? And uh, <laughs> that's a and, joke. And, and, no, it's and, not yes, a good exactly. joke. Um, and that's what Brian was like. No, no, let's just not speak of this. Can can you go back in the box office and work? And he's like, okay, okay, I'll do that. <laughs> First of all, if it was a joke, what are you doing with a boner? Like, how do you get a boner from a joke? Uh, like, are you so sexually turned on by the fact that you're going to have perform a joke that you get a boner? Like, j- like boners don't work that way. Like you, you get one from getting sexually aroused, not from the prospect of being able to pull a good joke. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so yeah, it was. Um, it was a horrifying experience for him. <laughs> but uh, you know, after after you know, he worked the rest of his shift that day, and he was like, ha, as he was leaving, he's like, ah, I got you again. That was a good one. And then he never showed up to work again. <laughs> <laughs> no, he never came that to work again. That was his last day. He just never came back for any of his shifts. I, I, that's definitely worth never coming to work again for. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, this was back in the day, so I happened upon his MySpace, and uh, he finally came out. Uh, his his top eight was nothing but shirtless dudes. And uh, it, I'm guessing he's having a great <laughs> life now. I haven't talked to him in, in, in quite a while. What did you guys used to do to the food? Um, well, uh, it's not so much what we did to the food, but it's what we didn't do that we were supposed to. Uh, for instance, we, at the end of the night, you know, we're supposed to just throw out the popcorn. Uh, but what the boss would do, because he's a cheapskate and wanted to come in under budget, he would make us bag up whatever popcorn was not eaten or sold and put it in this giant black trash bag. Not sealing the trash bag, just putting it in a trash bag and throwing it in the back. Meanwhile, the cleaning crew comes in overnight and and everything. The bag's open. Um, So chemicals are getting into it and whatnot, all sorts of grossness. Then he would want whoever was opening the next morning to put that batch of popcorn that's now 12 hours stale and full of all sorts of chemicals back in the the popper or like in the heater and just rewarm it up and sell it yeah a lot of employees would use the customer cups that they'd wind up selling um some didn't have the greatest of hygiene or uh the the sexual uh diseases that come along with it to be drinking out of cups and reselling them but oh no but, but they would use the cups and then uh, rinse it out with water and re- resell it to the other customers. Be- because they count the cups at the end of the night, and that's how you do your count as to how much money should be in the drawer. Yeah, so, so you got some zit-faced teenager with herpes all over his mouth from having unprotected sex with some horrible-looking girl. Uh, or somebody who has a, a really re- gross cold sore that may not just be a cold sore. Yeah, it's called herpes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, this movie theater that you worked at doesn't sound like it was in the greatest of neighborhoods, but sometimes seeing a movie in a bad neighborhood can be a lot of fun. Um, as a matter of fact, some of the antics in the theater that you see among the audience is actually more entertaining than the film. Now, I am a big Jackie Chan fan. Uh, I remember when I saw Rumble in the Bronx. I had to go. There was only one theater in the city that was playing it in West Philadelphia. So I go into this movie theater. They want to scream at the movie whenever they like something. So, for example, if there's some guy and, you know, there's something around the corner waiting for him, they'll yell, oh, shit, 
oh shit look out motherfucker and it's a lot it's a lot of fun i mean it, it takes it's better than 3d it takes you into a new dimension of, of film watching and uh so we're watching rumble in the bronx so the dude in front of me gets a phone call in the middle of the movie and rather than like turn it to silent he just picks it up hello yo what's up shanique well, you know what what the fuck you doing calling me while i'm watching a movie i told you i was watching i told you i was going to fucking movies i don't care what's going on at home uh, hello Hello? Can you believe this shit? The bitch hung up on me, you bitch! So he dials her back <laughs> and starts screaming at her. He's like, don't you ever motherfucking hang up on me when I'm in the mother- motherfucking movie theater, you bitch! How dare you? Who the fuck you think you want? Who the fuck you think you're talking to? What the fuck? Have you lost your goddamn mind? You don't disrespect me. You never did. <laughs> and we're all, none of us are asking this man to shut up. Because the fact that he's in a phone argument, he told her to get off. He didn't want her calling when he's in a the movie theater. She hangs up. He calls her. But the, the situation is so ludicrous. We are all laughing. And I actually had to see that movie again so I could play catch up because I missed a great fight scene. But uh, it was worth it, man. It was uh, that, that was a fun night seeing Rumble in the Bronx. One of my friends took me to see a movie uh, for my birthday. Um, it's this little movie called Borat. And um, he was Jewish, and that movie is not very nice to Jewish people. Uh, right? It, there's a lot of there's a lot of humor that could be that could one could argue is bordering on anti-Semitic, but I, I think it's done in a fun way. Yeah, no, I, I uh, thought I thought it was hilarious, <laughs> but I it's, literally it's it's anti-Semitism in the nicest way possible. I, I got to watch way. one of my friends. Just basically turn white from being offended so much. This look on his face, like his jaw dropped so low, you thought he was getting ready to blow somebody. <laughs> well, you should have went for it. Yeah, yeah, it was just uh, probably one of the most awkward experiences. Because uh, I mean, I I enjoyed the hell out of it, but I didn't I didn't know of the the content. So when he was like, oh, "I'll take you for your birthday," I was like, "Okay," um, and then he was like regretted it immensely. Needless to say, we never saw another movie um, as well. <laughs> he stopped going to movies just because one movie had some uh, some Jewish humor? Uh, no, I don't know if he, he stopped going to movies, but he stopped taking me, like, taking me to a movie. You didn't make the movie. I didn't. No, that is correct. <laughs> what the fuck? What the, <laughs> I, think, I think this dude's a little too uptight. I mean, you know, I hate the Nazis as much as the next dude, but if you're never going to go to the movies... Again, with a friend, just because the friend took you to see Borat, I think you might be a little too uptight. <laughs> that is that is definitely possible, uh, to say the least, for sure. Um, I've got a different kind of crazy story. Uh, it involves our, fa- okay. our favorite douchebag manager. But this one is going to be one of the ones that led to the end of my time at the theater. Now, this guy, this manager... Crab Apple, one of the other managers had called out, so it was me and him uh, at the end of the night closing down the theater. So while I did inventory, he went up to count the money, you know, of okay. all the all the the drains and and all of the sales to the further day. He went ahead and did it and dropped the money in the safe, and I finished inventory and left at like six in the morning. Now, mm-hmm. now I come back at ten in the morning because his this jackass scheduled me to come back at ten. Um, so four hours later, I'm back and I'm counting the safe, getting it ready to open up. And I'm like, wait a minute. There's like $5,000 missing out of this safe. What? And I'm like, what the hell's going on? So I get the other manager to come in there and I'm like, count this. Like maybe I'm just, it's just because I'm exhausted, but I'm, I'm missing $5,000 out of the safe. (laughs) <laughs> and uh, he, he <laughs> look. I feel exhausted, but I'm not exhausted enough to miss five thousand dollars. But maybe he, I'm wrong. Go ahead. Yes, yeah. He, he counted, and he's like, uh, "Dude, there's like five thousand dollars missing from the safe." And I was like, <laughs> "Okay, so that's what I thought." So obviously, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna call Crab Apple because one, he was the last person to handle money. Um, yeah, but you're also a suspect too because you've also handled the money. Trying to blame it. you could have been trying to blame it on him, Creech. Exactly. Well, no, yeah, he he, he submitted that it, the money was there, and then when we counted in the morning, it wasn't there. So we call him, and we're like, hey, there's $5,000 missing in this safe. Um, 
and he's like, oh, oh okay, well, uh, let, me, let me be right there. Um, so I was like, okay. About four hours later, <laughs> he shows up. He lives about 20 minutes away from the, uh, the, the theater, by the way, in a new car. <laughs> oh man! What the fuck? <laughs> in a new, okay. in a new car, a new convertible. Wait, well, wait. Walk us through the dialogue. So he shows up in a new car. <laughs> he 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 came in chipper as always. He was like, "Hey guys, how's it going? Hey, Mister Creech, how are you doing?" And just walked upstairs like nothing was happening. Like there wasn't five thousand dollars missing, and. You know, corporate calls. But he like, knew he knew that the reason you called him was to tell him that there was five thousand missing, and it, then he comes in in a new car and walks right away and doesn't talk to you guys about it. Exactly. And then he tried to blame us, the corporate, and we found out. And we got a cool a hold of corporate, and we're like, "Yo, look look at this shit! I worked last night. I didn't touch the money at all. This guy comes in with a new fucking car." <laughs> and eventually he tried to uh, pin it on me and I was just like forget this and I wound up leaving the theater and getting unemployment for a while because uh, he couldn't he couldn't pin it on me and he wound up getting fired and and uh, shipped away who steals five thousand dollars and immediately buys a new car at th- like th- th- that night? Who does that? Who's the same guy the that literally he's the only manager I had ever worked for that got investigated for uh for um child inappropriate touching. Oh my god, that's At, terrible. He, this guy, this manager, you know, Crab Apple would bring little girls up to his office and he'd close the door and they'd be in there for like 20 or 30 minutes and come out with new theater t-shirts and posters and everything and so like the employees what? the employees of the theater wound up writing corporate being like we think he's molesting girls in his office um because it was just so freaking weird well Creech, we got time for one more story what's your do you got a big uh you got a big ender for us actually i do have one. Oh, oh, oh! no yeah. please do yeah, please yeah. do. now this one i don't even know if i can get in trouble for this one um, oh, then it has to be good. <laughs> yes. Now, now, this one I'm going to use no names. It's not something I personally did, but I witnessed sure. them. I witnessed them do it, and then allowed it to be sent <laughs> yeah. off like this. Okay. Yeah. Now, now, uh, have you I'm, have you seen the movie Fight Club? Right. Yes. W- okay. Uh, so there's the scene where Brad Pitt's talking about splicing together porn in the movies, right? Yes. Now we obviously we're a first run theater. We only show up to rated R. But uh, one of my friends that was a projectionist was was getting ready to leave uh, the theater as you know leave the job, and uh, the boss pissed him off. Like this was. Uh, so what he did was um, we had both the movie Forgetting Sarah Marshall and Iron Man two there, and they were uh, getting ready to leave. So we were going to have to break it down and ship it off to the next theater. Now, there's a scene in Forgetting Sarah Marshall in the very beginning of the movie where Jason Segal's character uh, winds, finds out that his girlfriend doesn't want to be with him anymore. And uh, yeah. he's he had just taken a shower. So when she says she doesn't want to be anymore, you know, be with him anymore, he, he, you know, he uses his hands to cover his mouth like he's shocked. And then his towel drops, and you see full frontal male nudity. Oh, so, good. So what... Sounds like my kind of movie. <laughs> yeah, uh, but basically that, that clip right there, my friend cut out of that movie. And then <laughs> what he did was he got to the end of Iron Man, where Tony Stark reveals, I am Iron Man, and then it goes into the credits. Well, before it goes into the credits, he inserted that scene of the guy getting shocked <laughs> and dropping his towel and exposing his, his male genitalia. And uh, and then it goes into credits. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah, especially when you consider, you know, Iron Man was more kid oriented. It was PG, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so you have like this. Okay, the movie's so great, and then I am Iron Man, and then an eye full of dick into the theater. <laughs> so we don't we don't know where the print went to, 
but there is no way they would have caught that. So it at least screamed one time. So in yes. other words, he he splices in the dick scene at the end of Iron Man. It's I am Iron Man. We see a dick, and he wraps it up, sends it out to the next theater. The next theater is not going to check the whole movie. So somewhere in the world, <laughs> a, a room full of children watching this movie saw I am Iron Man and just saw a dude's pants drop and a dick fall out. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Some second-run theater somewhere in America got the Iron Man, the R-rated <laughs> Iron Man cut. <laughs> Dude, that is brilliant. Uh, you know what? When most people quit a job, they say they just had enough, and there's a straw that broke the camel's back, and they say, fuck this place. Fuck you all. I'm never coming back. You know, and they storm out the door, and it's a big scene. No, not this dude. He's He spent hours of time calculating revenge on not only that theater, and but the entire film industry, really. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> it was this giant last fuck you to pretty much everything. Uh, all right, everybody. Well, <laughs> thank you so much for listening to the Creech and Franz show. We really appreciate uh, you. And Creech, you have any final words for our fans? I had a great time. I hope uh, you, you uh, enjoyed these crazy ass stories of movie experiences. Yes, and don't forget to send us your recommendations for shows, topics that you would like to hear about. Thank you so much. We love you. <laughs>